Testing, testing, testing. Okay, nerds, have a little techie video for you here on specifically about how to interface the Ardent ADS SR1 repeater and the Pofung BF, what is it, BF9500 UHF only radio. Not really going to go into detail much about the Ardent repeater. There are other videos uh, you can understand how this thing works or the, um, the radio itself. The, uh, the, the Pofong BF9500. This video is, about, is only about how to interface these two um, for the proper use of the, uh, of the repeater. The Pofong user manual here doesn't have a peep about how to do this. And what I mean by that is it doesn't give you the, uh, the pinout for the RJ45 connector. So I looked on the internet, couldn't find it, so I'll tell you how I figured this out. The, um, the mic that comes with the uh, Pofung uh, pretty much opened it up on the back and there's a board on the back that shows the interface cables and it's got a pinout of, uh, of what they are. So if, so if you're wondering what this mess here is, an important takeaway is it requires two cables. You have an RJ45 connection that goes into the radio where the microphone normally goes, which connects to the RJ45 connection on the Arden repeater. But you have to also use a try to get this clear here, a um, audio cable uh, jack. It's a 3.5 millimeter uh, mono, and you have to uh, tie in. To the line for um, one particular uh, line for the audio in the Pofong radio jack doesn't have an audio line that or audio uh, connection uh, that comes from the speaker uh, that you need to use for your Arden controller. So you have to install this mono line and connect it to the back of the radio. Now, granted, you could do this a little bit cleaner than this and connect this line directly in into the uh, crimp connection there but I had made the crimp connection up first and this was just how I figured it out All right, here's your little audio connection on the back they got a couple of ports I'm not exactly sure what that top one is the manual doesn't say but here's the audio jack and it is a mono. You may be able to use a stereo one, I'm not sure. Since it's mono, I used a mono jack or mono plug. Just plug it right in there. And that will give you your audio output on one of these lines right here that I got spliced into the Cat5 cable. All right, this is in the battery compartment of the um, of the ADS repeater, SR1 repeater. Um, it doesn't normally use batteries when you connect it to uh, this type of stationary radio. You will need to use the batteries if you connect it to a uh, to an HT. Um, but whenever you connect it to the Pofong radio, um, the repeater is powered from the um, from the radio itself. So there's a dip switch there. You see number four is selected. Um, it's on. And that's because the, um, the Pofong radio has a combined, a combined um, uh, PTT and, uh, and transmit um, button. Or, or, um, so just be sure to, when you make this connection, to open this thing back up open it up in the back and select dip switch 4 to the on position. The other ones are in the manual, they're about volume level setting and then uh, number 3 is for um, like manual resetting, manually resetting the repeater. So here's the pinout for the interface connection between the uh, repeater and the radio. Uh, this column over here is the uh, the ADS repeater 
and these are the pins associated with the uh, Cat5 connection and the uh, and the purpose of it. Likewise on the radio, here's the pins on the Pofong and the purpose of it. Now just be sure that you get your pin straight. It's real easy to get these things backwards when you're making your RJ45 connection. So this is the nomenclature uh, that I used for the pins here. It's the standard RJ45 connections. So important note here, again, um, you're connecting to the PTT on the SR1 to the PTT transmitter combo on the Pofong. That's why you need to set that dip switch forward on. And the other thing is, like we talked about, the uh, the audio in isn't connected via the RJ45 pin. It's connected to the center pin on a 3.5 millimeter mono jack. Another tip is whenever you connect this RJ45 jack in there, the uh, the retention clip is kind of funny. You really have to wiggle it and push it to get it in there and make sure you have a good connection. So I read a bunch of comments on the internet about this particular radio and why would anyone want a UHF only radio? It's about $110. Uh, most folks that'll have a UHF radio, they'll get it a combo VHF UHF radio. And, and those are great. Uh, the application for this, in, in my opinion, is that it makes an excellent um, GMRS repeater. It can be a dedicated uh, radio just for that purpose, and that's kind of why I got it. I wanted to set this up as a repeater for my neighborhood. Well, I hope you found this content useful. Enjoy. Stay safe.